بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah يا مرحبا بكم يا أهلا وسهلا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward each and every one of you that has come out today to benefit and to hear some reminders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit all those who tuned in online and from afar and from those who may listen to the recordings later in the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you tremendously. There are many times that we come and we sit inside of lectures and classes and so on and so forth and sometimes we walk away from it not benefiting all that we could have benefited from it. Bismillah <clears throat> ta'ala it saddens me that we weren't able to do our regular uh, setup as relates to the lectures due to the, the weather and the like and the sisters are not able to be here in the masjid um, however there are aspects of it that are a blessing many from them at the head of them is that in this situation this setup your brothers are a lot closer which means it's easier to be more interactive and this is ta'ala. what I ask from everyone is that let's let's have this session be one that is interactive Naam. likewise those who are afar let it also for you as well be interactive Naam. for those who are inside of the room you can type the answers and the responses inside of the, the room or say them verbally Lebas. we don't have to hear them but just so you're interactive and Bithnilahi Ta'ala will gain some, some benefit. I ask everyone to grab a copy of the Mus'haf or to bring up the, the app uh, on the phone, tablet, uh, mobile device, what, what have you, um, so that we can go along. And the reason is, the reason is, um, well, a few reasons, but from them is that it is not necessarily my intention to come here today and to say anything new to you, to come here today and to uh, teach you anything. But really, it's more of a reminder, a more of a reminder. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And remind them, for verily, and give the reminder, because verily the reminder benefits the believers. So with Allahi ta'ala, <clears throat> I would like everyone to lend me an ear that is attentive and to reflect and to ponder with Allahi ta'ala over that which uh, we want to go over, inshallah ta'ala. Likewise, um, I really want everyone to be reflective and not just hear these words and pass them off as something that you heard or something that is unrelated to you, but I want everyone to reflect upon what is what are we going to go over and how that relates to you as an individual. And then I want you to think how that relates to your families um, and so on and so forth. From the title that uh, I have chosen for today's class or today's reminder, as we should say, um, then verily <clears throat> we want to look at the five stages of human existence the five stages of human exi uh, existence and the impact of Aqidah on the human experience Naam. and with Nilahi Ta'ala it will become clear what is intended by that title as we go through um, what we have prepared for today and how that relates to our everyday life. And that's really what I want everyone to focus in on, to reflect on. How do these things affect us day in and day out? How do these things help us be better better Muslims now on a daily basis? Al Alama Imam Uthameen Rahimullah Ta'ala he mentions inside of Aqidah his Sharh of Aqidah al Wasatiyah by, by Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that the human beings in al Insan lahu khamsa marahil, that the human beings they have five stages, yani five stages of their existence. Naam. And inshallah, we'll see how this ties in yani, to, uh, to the overall objective of what we were trying to get at. The first of these is the Marhala al Adam, was the stage of non existence, was the stage of non existence, where we did not exist at all. Thum al Haman, and then the stage of pregnancy. Thum al Dunya, then the stage of the Dunya. Thum al Barzakh, then the stage of the Barzakh, the grave. And then that which is after the grave. Inshallah, we're going to go through them one by one again. So don't worry if you didn't get them all down. You will catch them. As far as the first stage, as far as the first stage, then Allah Ta'ala's statement, it points to it. And that can be found in Surah Al-Insan. And it's the first ayah. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءٍ مَذْكُورًا And has there not come upon mankind a time when there were nothing to be mentioned? A time when there were nothing to be mentioned at all. Naam. Again, this is in Surah Al-Insan. And it's the first, the first verse from Surah al Al-Insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us here in this ayah about a reality that we all acknowledge and that there was a time that we didn't exist. There was a time that we didn't exist. There was a time when we were nothing even to be mentioned. There was a time when our parents existed, yet we were nothing to be mentioned. Years before our conception, Years before our birth, even our loving mothers and our loving fathers didn't even mention us. Why? Because they had no idea that we were going to be brought into existence. This within itself should always give us pause, should always 
humble us so that we know that verily we have a Lord who created us, Allah Jalla wa'ala, who created us for a tremendous purpose. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا خَلَبْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn nor the mankind except for them to worship me. Ma'am. And it is incumbent or it is a benefit here that Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, he mentioned that whenever you hear يَعْبُدُونَ in the Qur'an, that it means يعني, to establish the tawheed. So what's meant by يَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ يُوَحِدُونَ To single out Allah alone with ibadah. So when you hear ibadah in the Qur'an, then it means tawheed, to establish tawheed. And we benefit from that. So we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And this is a ni'mah. Some of the ulama, they say that all of the, the ni'mah all of the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us and that bestows and that, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon us in our life, they're all followed by the original bounty that He created us. That He created us. So every other bounty that is bestowed upon us came after the bounty that Allah Ta'ala created us. He brought us from nothing and He brought us into existence. Naam. And we know. As Muslims, we know that in Allah khalaqana wa razaqana wa lam yatrukna hamala. Right? We know this from Talatha to Usul. How many years we've been studying Talatha to Usul as, as communities? Not saying us here as individuals, right? But as individuals perhaps, but moreover as communities. How many years communities have been studying Talatha to Usul? Naam? And it's right there in the Muqaddimah, in the Muqaddimah of the book, that verily Allah has created us and Allah sustains us. Naam? And that Allah Ta'ala has not left us alone. He has not left us that we are not held reliable. We're not held accountable for what we do. This is our aqidah. Correct? This is our creed. Correct? But the question becomes, does this translate into our day-to-day -day life? We know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created us and He has made us accountable for what we do. So we're going to be held accountable for our deeds. Are we living our life in a manner in which shows that we are thinking about this and that this is on our minds? Are we acting in such a manner that we are prepared to answer for what we're doing? Are we speaking in such a manner that we are ready to answer for what we're saying? So on and so forth. Right? This is just something to reflect about. The next ayah that Shaykh Rathamin, he mentions, which shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created us from nothing. Some of the other stages will, will be mentioned and you'll be able to see them. And also the overwhelming motivation on the effect that our creed should have on us and our belief and the relationship between our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our belief in the last day. Allah Ta'ala, He says, and this is now, if you could turn to Surah Hajj, Surah Al-Hajj, and it's verse number five, so you can follow along, Bidnilahi Ta'ala, and to reflect and think about, contemplate, just don't listen, but contemplate. What Surah have you said it was in? Hajj. What verse? Five. five. Now. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Like, Allah Ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, O humanity, O human beings, mankind from the human beings and from the jinn, in kuntum fi raybin min al ba'ath, if you are in doubt as relates to the resurrection, if you are in doubt, as relates to the resurrection. I want you to contemplate on this now. For those who doubt the resurrection, for those who think it's only this life and then that's it. Allah Ta'ala, He says, مُخَلَّقَةٍ وَغَيْرُ مُخَلَّقَةٍ 
لِنُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ Allah Ta'ala, He says what means? We created you, i.e. meaning Adam, alayhi salatu wassalam, from what? From dust. Naam. طيب. خلقناكم من تراب. We created you from dust. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah wa Who was intended by creating you from dust? Is who? Adam, alayhi salatu wassalam. ثم من نطفة and then from a نطفة mixed drops of male and female sexual discharge who was intended by this who was created from نطفة the offspring right the children of Adam طيب ثم من علقة ثم من مضغة مخلقة وغير مخلقة from and then from a piece of a clot, a piece of thick, congelated blood, and then from a lump of flesh, and then from a lump of flesh, some formed and some unformed. Some unformed in the case of what? Miscarriage. Miscarriage. Some formed in the case of what? Birth. Birth. I, I, now, listen, I want you just to think about this. Think about it. Let's go back. There was a time when we were nopfa. We were just a mixture of the male and female discharge. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took us from that to being a clot of blood. Alaqa. A clot of blood. Right? In all of these stages, we could do nothing for ourselves. Nothing. Allah SWT took care of us. Right? Then, we were mudgha. Naam, the mudgha. The mudgha is, is, is like, it means a piece of meat. Like a piece of meat, piece of flesh. The mudgha and, and the lugha, it comes from that which has been chewed upon. Meaning you see the traces of the teeth inside. Like you bite, you bite down a piece of meat. Sometimes you see the trace, the teeth and impressions inside the meat, right? Some of the embryologists, they have noticed that at certain stage of fetal development, when it's in the stage of a mudra, it looks as if their teeth print in it where the spinal cord is. It looks like the impressions of teeth in it. It's a perfect description, right? But listen, Allah Ta'ala reminds us of a great bounty. Allah Ta'ala, he says, مُخَلَّقَةٍ وَغَيْرِ مُخَلَّقَ Some formed, the ones that are formed are what? The ones that gave birth. They went to the full term. They survived. And some unformed. They miscarried. SubhanAllah, we could have been from the miscarriages. But we weren't. Allah Ta'ala took care of us and he blessed us. Naam. This is a ni'mah. This is a ni'mah. Allah Ta'ala, He says what means that we make it clear unto you. Meaning that so that you know it's a clear sign to show you our power, our might, our ability. Our power, our might, our ability. Yani from meaning of Allah. Allah's power. Right? That we came from fluids that went to clotted blood, that went to pieces of meat, that went to, now, now look at us, mashallah, big, strong muscles, right? Allah, mashallah. You see? So that he can show unto us his might, his power. وَنُقِرُّ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ مَا نَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ And that, and we cause you to remain inside of the wombs for an appointed term. To remain inside of the wombs for an appointed term. Some went the full term of gestation. Some came out early, prematurely, so on and so forth. But it was until Allah Ta'ala had decreed that we would be there inside of the wombs of our mothers. Naam. Thumma nukhrijukum Then we brought you out as babies 
then we brought you out as babies. So that was a ni'mah. The fact that we made it through the stage of birth, which is the next stage, and or pregnancy, and we were and we were born. This is a ni'mah. Then we came out as babies. Thumma itabulugu ashudaku so that we may reach our age of full strength. We came out as babies to reach our age of full strength. وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُتُوَفَّى But there were from us some who died. Some who died. Died meaning when? They died young. Not all babies grow up, correct? Some babies die. Not all children grow up, some die. Some of us may have grown up and have known some people who are aged when we were younger who died, correct? No, not everyone makes it. So there is another ni'mah, there's another bounty. It's another bounty. Allah Ta'ala, he goes on and he says, وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْذَ عمر And then there are some that are brought back to a miserable old age. Some are brought back to a miserable old age. They live for a very long time. نعم لكي لا يعلم من بعد علم شيئا To the point where now they barely know anything. They know, have, they know nothing after a time in which they used to know. Some people, they get old. They suffer from dementia, Alzheimer's, and so on and so forth. Now, they don't know anything. They used to know a lot. They can't take care of themselves when at a time they used to take care of others. Not everyone who reaches old age is afflicted with this. So those who are not afflicted with this from the elders, those who are senior in age, this is another ni'mah. This is another bounty. Now, Allah Ta'ala, this within itself shows Allah Ta'ala's power, might, and ability. That He created us from nothing. We were nothing. Now, and Allah Ta'ala brought us through all of these different points in our life, all of these different stages where we didn't do anything, had nothing to do with nothing. And he brought us until we were reached our full strength, so on and so forth, which shows Allah Ta'ala's might. And all of this is a admonition, or all of this is an admonishment and an ibra, a lesson for those who have doubt in the bath. Allah Ta'ala created us from nothing. And to bring us back, as the ulama they mentioned, is easier than bringing us out of nothing. And it's only said like that in terms of so that we can gain some kind of comprehension. But the reality of it is, is that what? It's all easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But understand the fact that we were, that Allah brought us from nothing into something, then who would doubt that he could bring us back after we had just bones that have decayed and become dust? Easy to bring us back. It's easy to bring us here the first time. So much more. Is likewise is easy to bring us back. Also, another example, Allah Ta'ala, He says, And you see the earth, barren. But when we send down upon it water, then the earth. It 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 it, it, yani it stirs to life and it swells. Wa ambetat min kulli zawjin bahij. It 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 swells to life and it brings forth every kind of lovely growth in 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 pairs. Every kind of lovely growth in pairs. Naam. This ayah we were to reflect upon it and to really contemplate over the benefits that are contained therein. Then we will realize beyond a shadow of a doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a great purpose and that we are responsible and that 
to put it frankly, this whole affair is no joke. We're not here for just and plain. We're not here for no reason, but we're here for a tremendous reason. Allah Ta'ala, He mentions about the second marhala and the second stage of human existence is what? Is the marhala of the haman of pregnancy. قال الله تعالى الله تعالى he says يخلقكم في بطون أمهاتكم and we created you inside of the stomachs of your mothers خلق من بعد خلق creation after creation في ظلمات ثلاث in three darknesses in three darknesses as 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 it comes in Surah Al Zumar in its verse number six thirdly the third stage of our existence is the marhala at dunya is the time that we're here inside of the dunya. The time that we're here inside of the dunya. And this was touched upon in the aforementioned ayah from Surah Al Hajj. Wallahu akhrajakum min bulturi umahatikum. Naam, it was mentioned there, but also it was mentioned here in this ayah Surah Al Nahl, in this verse 78. Allah Ta'ala says, Wallahu akhrajakum min bulturi umahatikum la ta'alamuna shay'a. And Allah brings you out of the stomachs of your mothers not knowing anything. Wajjala lakum sam'a wal abusara wal afida. And He has given you hearing, sight, and hearts for understanding. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that perhaps you will be thankful. So that you will show gratitude and be thankful unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at dunya, and this is what we need to concentrate and, and, and focus in on and reflect about. Because the dunya, this is the marhala of imtihan. This is the time that we're going to be tested. When we look at the other times, these were times that were prior to the test. These were times that were prior to us being responsible and held accountable for what we're doing. Before we existed, there was nothing on us. Right? No no blame, no praise. But when we were developing a sign of the wombs of our mother, nothing on us. When we were babies, nothing on us, so on and so forth. Now, I'm, but after we have reached the age that the angels are writing and so on and so forth, that's with here in the dunya, then this is the stage right here. We'll say this is the make it or break it stage. This is the make it or break it stage. Now, is there anyone who believes that this third stage of being here in the dunya is the final stage and it lasts forever? Not us. We don't believe that. The Muslims don't believe that. We believe what? It's going to end. We believe that it will end. We understand and we believe that it is Allah who created life and who, and who created death. Allah Ta'ala, He says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ The one who created death and who created life. Why? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ so as to test you, ayyukum ahsana amala, to test which one of you is best indeed. Well, who al Aziz al Ghafur, and he is the Almighty, the most forgiving. What does that mean, best indeed? Best indeed, akhlasu wa aswabu. Best indeed, meaning the ones who are the most sincere and the ones who are the most correct. Most sincere meaning upon Tawheed, upon the Tawheed. The most correct meaning upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is from the manner in which we establish the purpose for our creation. That we establish the Tawheed, we worship Allah and Allah alone. And that we are upon the Sunnah of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
But they like time. We're gonna come back to these concepts and not get too much into what it was intended at this time. And then the fourth stage, Wa Marhala al Barzakh. As far as the the Barzakh, Allah Ta'ala he says, Women wara him barzakhun. And 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 behind them is a barzakh, meaning those who are dead. Behind him is a barzakh in a yomi yuba'athun until the day of judgment, meaning they're not going to come back to this life. They're not going to come back to this life. Right? Those who are dead, that's it. There's no going back. Once you have left the third stage, and once they left the third stage and they come back, there's no coming back. Once you're on to the fourth stage, there's no going backwards. There's no going back to the third stage. Just like here. Now that we're in the third stage, there's no going back to the second stage. We can't become babies now and go back into the wombs of our mother. And there's no going from the uh, from that stage to the stage prior to it. We go back to nothing. Now and there's no going backwards. You can't go from the third to the second, second to the first. Right? So when we're in the Baruzach, there's no coming back. Now, when we're in the stage of the Baruzach, when we're in the stage of the grave and the grave should be a ibra for us. Now it should be a reminder for us. As our Sheikh uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Muhyiddin he mentions that the one who doesn't take a lesson from the grave, then there's no good in him. There's no good in a person who is not moved and touched by the grave. And then he reflects over a a a a, a companion of his who he said he was with us. Just some time ago, he said for over 40 years, we have known him. We used to go places together, travel together, sit together, eat together. He said, but now he has recently died. And now the, the bugs and the worms are eating him. He was just there with us just a little while ago, eating with us. Now the bugs are eating him. He can't do anything for himself. It's over. It's done now. He said, if anyone doesn't take an admonition from the grave, then there's no good in him. La khayra fi. There's no good in him. Naam. Because, why? The final stage, marhala al-akhirah, is the marhala of the next world. Naam. Allah Ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Mu'minun, thumma innakum ba'na thalika al-mayyitun. And then after that, you're going to die. You will be dead. ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ تُبْعَثُونَ And then on a day of judgment, you will be raised. Then on a day of judgment, you will be raised. From the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is the Iman bil yawm al-akhir is the belief in the last day. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that the Iman in the last day, a Iman bi kulli ma akhbara bihi al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mimma yakunu ba'd al-mawt is the belief in everything in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us and conveyed to us what will happen after death. Everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed us of what will happen after death. All of this enters into Iman in the last day. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of the Qur'an as Shaykh as uh, Al-Alama Uthaymeen Rahmatullah Alayhi he mentions in the Sharhi, in the Aqidah Al-Wasutriya he mentions وَكَثِيرٌ مَا يُقَرِّنُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى بَيْنَ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِ تَعَالَى وَالْإِيمَانِ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ and often Allah He connects belief in Him and belief in the last day. He brings them together. Al Iman Bil Mabda Wal Iman Bil Mi'ad. The belief in the beginning and the belief what? In the in the end. In the end. Why? And this is something that I want us all to reflect on. لأن من لم يؤمن باليوم الآخر لا يمكن أن يؤمن بالله 
Because the one who does not believe in the last day, it is is impossible for them to believe in Allah. Right? Why does Allah connect belief in Him and belief in the last day? Because the one who does not believe in the last day, it is impossible for him to believe in Allah. It's impossible. If you don't believe in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it's not possible you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam? If in the Levi la yu'minu billah or bil yawm al-akhir and if a person doesn't believe in the last day and this is what I really want us to take stock in and to, and to be reflective over right in such a case that a person does not believe in the last day len ya'mal then he won't work for it he won't prepare for it why? he doesn't believe in it لأنه لا يعمل إلا لما يرجوه because he's only going to work for what he's looking forward to correct now this is what I want to question ourselves this is when I want us to really be reflective on ourselves if an individual truly believes in the last day then what would they have to do? Hmm? Act. Act. Meaning they're going to do what? They're going to prepare. prepare for it. They're going to get ready for it. Right? Like, what is it proper for a person who believes in the last day to act as if they don't believe in it? To act as if they, there is no last day? Wow. They're doing things recklessly, speaking recklessly, acting recklessly, as if they're not going to be questioned about it? As if they're not going to be held accountable for it? Right? Is that proper? No. Is that what happens? Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. Right? Are we living our lives in a manner in which is reflective of our belief in the last day? We would like to believe so. We would like to believe so. But when you look around, we don't see that being the case. Unfortunately, we don't see that being the case. And I'm saying this because the question I would like to ask is what is our motivation? What is our motivation? Right? Because that will be reflective in our day-to-day -day life. That will be reflected in our day-to-day -day life. Like, before looking at some ayat which go over some of the things that's going to happen on the day of judgment and which will stress to us why we need to prepare let me ask you this remember I, I didn't really come to, to really teach you nothing right this is a reminder for me and for you for me first Yom al Qiyamah from the actions. What are the first things we're going to be questioned about? Salah. How is our salah? Right? As men, we're supposed to pray how? In Jama'ah, together, right? Play. And generally that takes place where? In the masjid. So that means this should be a priority. Right or wrong? Should be a priority for us, right? So we're not saying that, I want anyone to believe that we're saying that that means that our masjid should be, you know, extravagant or anything like this. No, I'm not saying that. But our masjid should be Functional, correct? Right or wrong? Should be functional, right? Wait. Like, are they? No. No, they're not. 
Then. Then. And this is not pointing fingers at anyone because the responsibilities are all of us. We understand that having a place of residence for our families is a priority, correct? And it is, it's a priority, it is. It's, we're not saying it's not, it is a priority, right? But when we weigh that priority to the, uh, to the situations of our massaging, is there a correlation between the two? Do they, do they match? How many of the massages we have that are in places that we wouldn't tolerate for us to live in a place like that? Right or wrong? How many of our, some of our massages don't have hot water? Because we, because yeah, the people are not supported to pay the, the, the bill. Will we tolerate that in our own homes? No hot water for years? No, but we make sure we got hot water, right? But how many of our homes have roofs and ceilings and things that are not complete? Wires hanging, pipe exposed. How many of our homes have that? Right, none of our homes, correct? But how many massages are like this? Right? Where's our priorities? Now, I want now I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine this. This is as relates to our community masjid. Our community masjid. Us praying in Jama'ah is not just restricted to when we around the way. But this is wherever we at, day in and day out, correct? But, so that means that when you're at your place of work, you should be able to pray in Jama'ah, right? That means, let's stop there. Are we living in situations that that's conducive? Because if so, then that means we will have many places of prayer. Maybe a musallah, not necessarily a masjid, but a musallah, where people pray five times a day. How many of those do we have scattered throughout our general areas? Not many. Do we expect to have many? No. Why? Because the neighborhood masjid is, is not even where it needs to be. So how can you go to the next level? Right? But our families having Islamic identities and so on and so forth. Is that something that is important or is not important? It's important. Very important. Like the case of the Salah, we're in a place, we're in a land that these things are not going to be provided for you by the government. This is a Christian land. It's, it's not in their best interest to build massage for what? Are we going to wait for the Christians to build massage for us? No. Are we going to wait for the Jews to do it? The Hindus? No. So if we're not doing it, right? The but you know we choose to live here. So either these things are important for us or they're not important for us. If they're important for us and we realize we need them, then we should be working towards establishing them. Correct? Right or wrong? If not, then we should be working on getting out of here. Right or wrong? And even those who are working on getting out of here, don't you love for your brother what you love for yourself? So you should try to leave something behind for those who can't make it out. Not everybody can make it out. Right? Okay. Having, having situations where our children feel comfortable to grow up being Muslim and to look like Muslims. And let's, let's take the women, uh, let's, let's look at the women. That our women feel comfortable to go out and to shop and so on and so forth. How many people live in areas where they go to the supermarkets with their wives because they're scared that their wives may be harassed inside the supermarket by somebody? Right? They're scared their daughters may be harassed inside the, 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 the supermarket by somebody. We're talking the supermarket. To get your eggs, your milk, your you know your bread, your cheese, your, you know whatever, the supermarket. You're scared to send your family there because somebody might pull the khimar, somebody might say something, somebody one brother, well yeah, I will some some man spit on his wife, I will right? So you'll say because we know peer pressure is real, right? And there's some people who, who are weak and shaitan uses their weakness against them to now they, they don't want to cover because they feel like they, they are a target. 
but we should be in a situation where we 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 nurturing the the dean of our families, right? No, no, two one one two minutes, right? So my question becomes, what is our motivation? Because we because we see a disconnection in what we believe, what we say, and what we do, and what is manifest from our from our efforts. There's a disconnection. Because if we realize this is the case, why hasn't it struck anyone's mind then we need to make a supermarket where our families feel safe? So that means one that's a, that's what is owned by us, controlled by us. So when you go there, you don't have to hear music and all this nonsense. When you go there, you're gonna see people who look like you, who believe like you, who, you understand? So now everyone feels comfortable. And we're just talking about day-to-day day -day things, helping to maintain the Islamic identity, which means you live in communities that are predominantly Muslim. So that you feel secure, your family feels secure, you have a fighting chance to hold on to your religion. Why? What's the motivation in doing all this? All these things that we put forth for our, you know, blood, sweat, and tears as they say for it. What's the motivation in doing it? Because we believe in the last day. Because we believe in the last day. We're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to be questioned. How come you wasn't establishing your prayers correctly? We're going to say there were no masajid. How come you wasn't building masajid? How come we didn't take care of the masajid? How come you weren't, how come your children were leaving Islam left and right? It wasn't a good environment. Why didn't you put them in a good environment? Allah's earth is spacious, correct? There are efforts that we can do to put, have an impact, a positive impact upon the society, correct? But what efforts have we been doing to do that? But then we brag that we've been upon khayr for how many decades and how many... Okay, this is to show for what? What do you have to show for it? Where are the schools for the children to memorize Qur'an? I'm not talking about interdisciplinary stuff right now. I'm talking about to memorize Allah's book. Where's that? Where are the programs for the women to memorize Allah's book? For the men to memorize Allah's book? To teach people how to, 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 to read Arabic? To teach people the language of the Prophet Sallallahu The language of the Quran was revealed in. To teach people the everyday fiqh. Now, the fiqh dealing with the, the, the ibadah that they do, the ibadat. Where's that? Where is that? Where is where is the where's the institution that 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 we can go to to learn the proper aqidah, the proper minhaj? Where is that? We need that, right? Our children need that, right? Yom al qiyam, you're gonna need that, right? So what are we doing? What are we doing? So this is the mindset that I want to have everybody in, and I ran out of time. So we, yani, inshallah ta'ala, the next time, be prepared for more questions. But. I want you to walk away from this thinking what we believe. How does that translate into, into our everyday life and into our everyday situation? How could it translate into our everyday life, into our everyday situation? And wherever we see any type of deficiencies that let us work to mend those gaps and to excel and go to the next level. Let us not be suffice to stay at this level but let us go to the next level now let us go to the next level and that has to be after we depend upon Allah put our trust in Allah beg Allah and beg Allah and beg Allah and throughout every stage continue with those aforementioned things we have to put forth our efforts earnestly sacrifice as much as we possibly can to be a part of the establishment of good that we can benefit from when we're in our graves. So when we reflect upon the stages of human existence, understand that that third stage of the dunya is that stage that will have a bearing on everything that came or everything that's going to come after it that will have a bearing on our overall akhirah and this is the stage that we have to concentrate on bithnilahi ta'ala so that we can reap the reward. So I want you to walk away to thinking about that. How does our aqida impact us as individuals? How, what do we see from that impact inside of our life? And what can we do to change what needs to be changed? 
فنكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا